our academic arm of the Zawar Iman Foundation, Islamic Foundation. Um, after a brief introduction, inshallah, we will commence our graduation ceremony. Um, men's side, we will have um, all the boys on this side, and then the ladies' side, they have their own ceremony running parallel. So, inshallah, after the brief introduction, we will turn off the lady side microphone and then they can use their own microphone on the other side inshallah so um the purpose of darul iman foundation sorry, purpose of darul iman Islamic foundation is to establish the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as was practiced by the the com beloved companions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it was propagated down um with an authentic chain and a strong tradition um we have very humble beginnings, alhamdulillah, but um, most of the great things that happen in this world have a very humble beginning. Our goal is to, inshallah, establish the Sunnah of Rasulullah Wasallam in its true form in all aspects of deen. And inshallah, for that, we are striving to have not only just a place for us to pray in a Sunnah manner, but we also, alhamdulillah, have um, student activities, student classes, we have after school program, we have a six week summer school program. MashaAllah, these uh, we had 14 or 15 students in the summer school program this year. Um, and inshallah, starting in September 15, we will also start a adults halakha or adults classes for adult learning over the weekend. Um, again, the goal is to Inshallah, provide opportunity to learn the deen in its correct form in the in the tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as has been taught and understood by the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi and our elders. Um, we're inshallah also working really hard to see if we can start a school program, a full-time school program for our children. Um, it's not my station to actually sit here and. and um, and preach about the need of a full-time school program and providing an environment where our, our uh, children have um, don't have exposure to non-Islamic traditions that are very common in this country. Um, for that, we're inshallah trying really hard. If you have school-going age children, um, we have an initial brochure here, that yellow little fold trifold that you can take home and read about it. But there are also registration forms. Um, also, if you're interested, if you have a school going age child, usually between six years and um, older, come talk to either Imam Sajid or Fahim or myself, inshallah. So that's a brief introduction of Darul Iman, inshallah. These, uh, inshallah, glowing faces you see of the young children right behind me, inshallah, they um, came here and studied in the summer school program we had for six weeks. Um, the focus was on creating the environment and camaraderie between the Muslim children. Um, our curriculum included the basic aqidah or the creed, that learning the sunnah of Rasulullah not just by reading it and memorizing it, but actually practicing it. And also learning the hadith, the actual words of Rasulullah understanding their meaning of it and then practicing it in our everyday life. And not the least part of the school was also memorizing some of the very basic surah or chapters of Quran uh, that they can use, inshallah, in reading their salah. And finally, uh, every time they will be here for Asr Salah, we'll help them practice how to make wuzu and how to perform salah properly. So, inshallah, um, after this, I would request the ladies that they start their own program and we'll turn off the speaker from the ladies' side so they're not distracted by our program here. Inshallah, these students, they will each recite um, a surah that they learned here or, or they already knew it, but they uh, made it better. And after that, then every um, single student will be invited up here to share a hadith they learned and the meaning they learned of it, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for supporting these children.
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيرهم في تدليل وأرسل عليهم دير نبابي تعميهم بجارة من زجي فجعلهم كعصف مقول بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لإلاف كرش إلافهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبد رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع ومنهم من كف السلام عليكم بريم الرجال نقل في شيء السورة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدعو اليتيم ولا يحد على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون أعوذ من الشيطان المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أرجان كركس فسليهم بكمان فر إن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما عبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم ولي دين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيسلى نارا زات لهب ومعته همالة الهتب في جيدها هبل من مسد صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل الله وحد الله سمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر من شر قاسم 
introduce themselves inshallah and uh, share one hadith that they learned during the school inshallah we'll start with Afan Muslim, the meaning is Muslims should treat other Muslims as brothers. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ayyad, and I'm going to be saying a hadith for you. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Daniel. 
inshallah in this very limited um, resources that we have available inshallah we have a little bit of time before maghrib um, we have dinner after maghrib so don't give up hope inshallah um, we have inshallah a brief introduction of the, um, of the remaining services that this uh, institution provides and a few words from the imam sajid inshallah after that we have certificates for all the students and we also have something to appreciate them coming and working so hard and learning. Um, again, I want to remind everyone, inshallah, that after this you won't hear me talking this evening, that this brochure, please, if you haven't taken a copy yet, please take a copy. It has three sections. It talks about the full-time school program that we're working really hard to start if we get enough students. Believe it or not, we have the facility and the teachers and volunteers. We don't have the students committed to it yet. So if you think that hard part is to find people to teach your kid, then alhamdulillah, that part is mostly taken care of. Um, shall I take, uh, care, take uh, advantage of this opportunity? Second is the class for the adults. This goes in the hadith, the tafsir, the basic uh, jurisprudence of fiqh masail. This is for all levels of adults, and this is for weekend, very convenient time. Please, please inshallah, try and sign up for it. All of this information is available on our website as well, so this is very convenient. And the third part is the Quran teaching class or the after school program for the kids. Uh, bring in your kids here in a very friendly um, environment. They will inshallah learn to read Quran properly and they will inshallah learn and benefit from their teachers. Jazakallah khair. I did not, I was not entirely sure that we'll have time for this, so excuse me if it is more uh, abrupt and interrupted than usual. Um, mashallah, congratulations to all the students who participated and worked hard and came here and um, paid atten attention to what was being taught. Congratulations to the parents who gave importance to this and realized that this is something worthy of their children's time um, and special congratulations go out to the teachers who selflessly devoted their time they did not receive any compensation for this they were totally 100 percent entirely volunteer basis and they put their life and soul after transferring it to the children not only the words but also the meanings and the practice of what they were learning. 
So mashallah, this is the real essence. Today I'm also reminded of my grand sheikh, Hab Nasrullah Habib Al Rahul Kalyanwi, who dedicated his life to the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And as I've learned about him, all his life he lived in a very small home that did not even have proper rooms. And when rain would pour down, their roof would start leaking. And he was the imam of one of the biggest mosques of the city. And even if they wanted to give him some money, he would not take it. And live in the very small means. And he had a huge family. He had twelve children. Not to mention all the people that were related to him, that he was helping as much as he could. So, therein is lesson for us that this deen is the most valuable thing that we have. If we do not have this deen in our lives, if we do not have this deen in our children's lives, we have nothing. We basically have nothing. We may have big, huge mansions here. We may be living in big houses. We may be driving luxury cars, big cars. We may have really nice jobs, but we, if we did not take this deen to our heart, if we did not make this deen our life, and if we did not fulfill the responsibility of transferring this deen and the practice of this deen, and the passion, the spirit to stay steadfast on this deen, no matter no matter what comes, come hell or come high water, our children should have the spirit to stay steadfast and not give up even the tiniest thing of their deen. This is our responsibility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, there is one whole surah that mostly talks about how to bring up your children. Surah Luqman, you must have heard of it before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us what should be taught to our children. What are we supposed to teach our children and the method that the children should be taught in and who should be teaching them. All of those things have been explained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that surah, if you look up, The first thing that every father has to teach their child is to free themselves of shirk, of associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us now imagine number one if somebody is saying this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is quoting it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is quoting their words how important how valuable their speech becomes and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only just quoting them but saying wa huwa he was he was giving excellent advice he was giving beautiful higher standard advice he was giving vows to his children to his child ya bunayya la tushrik billah the first thing that you have to teach your children is that do not associate partners with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we only think that worshiping idols is shirk we only think that considering jesus christ a god is shirk or considering mary a na'udhu billah a mother of god is shirk my dear respected brothers, the Prophet has explained more than 70 kinds of shirk. And there's shirk is something that is so sensitive that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, لا تشرك بالله إن الشرك لظلم عظيم And in another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I, can, I will forgive everything on the day of judgment if I want, but I will not forgive shirk. And what, what are some of the forms of shirk when our child appreciates the importance of this world more than the importance of their deen. That is one form of shit. And that leads to so many other forms of shit that our children are constantly picking up from their environment if they are going into any non-Islamic environment. Children are like a clean slate and they are very impressionable. Very impressionable. Taking impressions from everyone. And in this age, this, this vulnerable age, Whatever is written on that clean slate stays there forever. If you think about your childhood, there's so many th things that you learned in your childhood that even if you want to give up consciously, you cannot. Even if you want to give up consciously, you cannot. So my dear respected brothers, we should all be very worried, very worried about what we are doing to our children. The other things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it so much importance that this whole surah, for the most part, 
First, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has said that teach your children not to associate partners with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, not to create anyone an equal of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in their hearts and their minds, even in the tiniest form. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling, teach them salah, the first of amal. Then going on, and these are the words of the Quran. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying, teach them even how to walk, how to talk. Walk safely, masjid. Min aswatik, the words of the Quran more or less that tell them to how to walk, teach them how to walk, teach them how to talk, how they should be talking with, with others. All of these things. And imagine, imagine what is what is this? Very brief word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very brief code of conduct given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is for the humanity and everlasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving it so much importance that at least at three points, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained how fathers interacted with their children, how their children reacted. Imagine how important it is. And another thing that also is clarified from the surah is that the concerns that we have for our children, normally the concerns that we have for our children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing those concerns up as well. But at the very end of the surah, in fact, in the last ayah of the surah, the whole surah talks about belief, working on their belief, working on their belief in the akhirah, preparing them for the hereafter. In the very last ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about rizq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that which you are worried the most about your children. And, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I recite this very often, in Allah indahu ilmu sa'ah wa yunazzilu al-ghayth that if you want to be concerned about our taqweening umur, these are all umur that are totally under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't even given the knowledge of this to anyone else, not even to the Anbiya. Not even to the Anbiya. It comes in hadith, somebody came to the Prophet and asked the Prophet about those five things. When will Qiyamah come? When, what is in the womb of a mother? When is rain going to pour down? What somebody is going to earn tomorrow? Leave the thought of earning 10 years later for your children, 15 years later, when they go through the proper schooling, which we are very worried about, that if our child does not go and learn in the usual system of education, in the usual system of killing our children, if they don't go through that, they will not be able to earn a livelihood in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you did not know what you were or what your child was going to be when they were not born, until they were born. You did not know, you do not even know the very important thing that your risk is connected with. If you look at it, all our risk is connected with rain coming down from the earth, from the sky. If the rain does not come down, there will be no nabata, there will be no plantation, there will be no meat for us to eat, the, the animals will die of famine. famine. All, the, all the things of risk that are connected, Allah SWT has said, you don't even know when the rain is going to come down. And then, to further clarify, as if this was not enough, Allah SWT is saying, you do not even know what enough, what a soul is going to earn for themselves tomorrow. Leave, leave the discussion of 10 years later or 15 years later. You do not even know what you yourself are going to earn tomorrow. So my dear respected brothers, my humble request is that at least grow some concern. At least grow some concern. I'm not saying that we are, we'll go and today and make a decision that we are going to start, you know, changing our direction, the way our children are being educated. But this is something that a Muslim in America is not even thinking about. And believe you me, the words of the Quran, the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will be held responsible. We will be held responsible. Even if, even if we do not, Even though the ruling of Sharia is that every man after they turn balil, after they turn an adult, they are responsible for their deeds. But remember, the effects that they are going to have 
on their adult life because of the education that you chose for them because of the education that you chose for them you will still be responsible in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that so my dear respected brothers inshallah we need to start thinking about it and start to send our children into environments where they at least gain some concern for their deen some akhlaq of deen something about deen inshallah i will not take more than more than 10 minutes and inshallah will uh, we have some other stuff remaining to do so uh Inshallah, this should go quick. Um, for all the students who joined the summer school, inshallah, I'll call their name one by one. I'd invite them to come here. Um, Imam if you can, you can hand them their certificates, inshallah. Um, and they, uh, Obed is, mashallah, one of the primary teachers over there. So he will hand them uh, a small gift to remember the summer school, with, inshallah. Usman um, Ali Sayyid. Rayyan Rashid Falu Muzammil Mahmoud Dayan Sayyid Abdullah Buya I know we had some age restrictions and we have limitations in our capacity and the teachers we had in the room we had available. So not everybody who wanted to join was able to join. Um, but uh, not to despair, inshallah. We also have uh, party favors and goodie bags for all the kids who joined us today, inshallah. So after I finish here, inshallah, I'll pass them around. And after Maghrib Salah, we'll inshallah have dinner. Jazakallah uh, khair for coming